this video we're looking at unit 2 biochemistry this is section 1 2.1 introduction to basic chemistry so we're going to be looking through some basic stuff in this video first we're going to look at elements elements is an element is a substance made up of one type of atom it is not earth wind fire and air or anything like that it is a substance made up of one type of atom so there on the right you see platinum that piece of platinum is made up of only platinum platinum is an element elements are made up of atoms atoms are made up of these things in the nucleus of the atom you have protons protons are positively charged particles and next to those sometimes you have these pro uh, these particles called neutrons neutrons have no charge and but they're just subatomic particles and found in the nucleus of the atom you can see there the nucleus is composed of both protons and neutrons most of the time there is one element that doesn't have any neutrons that's hydrogen and then you have electrons those electrons are found surrounding the nucleus and the protons and the electrons are typically equal in an atom that does not have a charge the periodic table of elements is a way that is <coughs> um, that these elements are organized in a in a way that is usable and so this is not a random placement on here you can see the different numbers and things associated with this periodic table and the symbols each of those symbols stands for a particular element the numbers stand for things as well let's get into that so there's two numbers you'll find usually on a periodic table the first one's called the atomic number the atomic number has to do with the number of protons in that element and so here you see carbon the symbol of carbon is C and six is the atomic number meaning it has six protons in that and then there's another number it's called the mass number and the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons and s sometimes you'll see that on the periodic table most of the time you don't most of the time you see something called atomic mass which is the actual mass of the atom um, but we won't use atomic mass we'll be using mass number instead which is just a simple um, number of protons plus neutrons and so the way to find the number of neutrons is subt to subtract the atomic number from the mass number and one thing that's important to note about the atomic number is it won't change meaning um, it's for carbon it's always six if you bump it down to five it's something else maybe boron I can't see that far away I think that's what it is <laughs> and if you bump it up to seven it's nitrogen and so it's it's not something different when you change the number of protons you change the element and so speaking of neutrons here's an isotope isotopes are atoms of an element that have a different number of neutrons um, than other atoms of that element and so here you see carbon 12 that carbon 12 has to do with the mass number and so carbon 12 is carbon in its normal state with uh, six protons six neutrons carbon 13 and carbon 14 are isotopes of carbon because they have a different number of neutrons than normal carbon does and so you'll see isotopes of all kinds of different atoms are and all kinds of different elements and typically these uh, isotopes aren't as stable as a normal and so they will break down at a regularly known interval and we typically refer to this as radioactivity electrons are negatively charged particles that um, swarm around the outside of the nucleus the outermost electrons are called valence electrons and we will spend quite a bit of time talking about valence electrons um, as far as they as it concerns biology these are the electrons that are usually going to be interacting with other atoms like forming chemical bonds and things like that because they're on the outside and uh, some atoms have very few valence electrons some have quite a f quite a few like valence electrons depending on the type of atom and that brings me to the next idea which is ions an ion is an atom with a positive or negative charge the reason it has a positive or negative charge because it has lost or gained electrons remember an atom cannot get lose or gain protons it's just a different atom when it gains or loses electrons it causes it to have a positive or negative charge if it loses electrons it loses minuses so now there's more pluses than minuses so it has a positive charge if it gains electrons it has more minuses than pluses and so it has a negative charge we will talk more about ions and a little bit a couple other terms here um, the positive ions are called cations and the negative ions are called anions 
And here's a term called molecule. Molecule is just a term for when two or more atoms are joined together chemically. It could be something as simple as like O2, a molecule of oxygen, or you can have very complex molecules like proteins. Uh, here you have like just some simple carbon dioxide, water, some things that we will deal with quite a bit in this class, and these are called molecules. And so now we're going to look at the different kinds of chemical bonds. We're actually going to be looking at four different kinds of chemical bonds. Yes, there's only three here, but that's okay. And we're going to look at them in um, descending order as far as strength. And so we'll be looking at the first one, the strongest bond first. And it's called a covalent bond. So the word co here means like to share. And then valent, we just talked about valence electrons. And so this is where they're sharing those outermost electrons where two atoms join together and they are forming a physical attachment meaning that they are actually both hanging on to electrons at the same time and so it's a very strong bond this is the strongest type of chemical bond where the two atoms are sharing electrons there's some other issues that we're going to talk about in our next um, video concerning polarity where covalent bonding can do some different sorts of things but for now, we're just going to mention that in a covalent bond, electrons are shared. Next is an ionic bond. And so you can see the word ion there. So this is when two ions join together, usually one positive, the other negative. And rather than sharing the electrons, they will be transferring those electrons back and forth. And so the one, so this particular picture here, you have atom one and atom two. Atom one has a single valence electron and it will readily get rid of that electron and so it will be positive right it gets rid of electrons so it'll be positive well atom B wants to gain an electron it has one more spot open in its valence outer valence shell and it will accept electron and so when it takes on an extra electron it becomes negative and that positive one and that negative one will interact together and so this forms what's called an ionic bond and um, there's several kinds of different molecules that form ionic bonds. Salt is the most notable, like sodium chloride. It forms an ionic bond between sodium and chlorine. And this is a strong bond, but not as strong as a covalent bond. And then next is a hydrogen bond. Um, hydrogen bond is kind of a, a misnomer because hydrogen bonds are more like um, interactions between molecules. Um, they're rather than being an actual physical connection where electrons are being exchanged or shared. Here you just have an interaction between two polar molecules. This is a, a hydrogen bond is an interaction between two polar molecules. We're going to talk about this idea of polarity in the next video. But in a polar molecule you have opposites. So think of the word like polar opposites. You have a positive and negative. One end of the molecule is going to be positive. The other is negative and the positive end of one molecule is attracted to the negative end of the other and they form this interaction called a hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds are the most important bonds in living systems because they're strong enough to stay together but not so strong that it requires a ton of energy to break them and so they're very efficient bonds. And lastly we're looking at van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are slight attractions between oppositely charged regions of larger molecules. It's a big weird definition and so the way to think about this is a van der Waals force um, is when you the negative side of one molecule pushes the negatives of the other molecule away to kind of reveal the positives right and so you can kind of see it on this picture and so the negatives from one are attracted to the positives of the other and it's a temporary thing because eventually those two molecules were kind of go back to their normal state causing those those interactions to be very temporary and so this particular kind of bond is, is usually used in living systems with enzymes or other things like that and again it's a temporary kind of bond